He's the heir to Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. DJ Uyunglele has been a winner ever since he first picked up a football. He finished high school as an All-American, the number one pro style QB in 2020, and a national champ. The six foot four, 250 pound QB is already built for the NFL. High school QBs just don't look like DJ. But Big Cinco is not just all muscle. He reads the game like a pro and will beat you with his legs too. DJ was born and raised in Southern California, but now he's the future of Clemson football. He was featured on Netflix as a sophomore, so you know he can handle that spotlight. Ui Ungalale is a natural born leader and might have the strongest arm to ever come out of high school. DJ's destined for big things, maybe the top pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. And none of this would be possible without his parents' sacrifices. This is the real story of DJ Uyunglele. Born on April 17, 2001. As a kid, DJ was a pure athlete and an absolute natural at both baseball and football. Baseball was actually his first love. He picked up a glove when he was four years old. His parents, David and Tasha, played a huge role in DJ's early career. The oldest Uyunglele got his stature from his pops and his calm demeanor from his mom. With family from American Samoa, their roots and culture always meant a lot to him and his folks. At just two years old, DJ would throw the football around with his dad. Even then, his dad Big Dave knew DJ was going to be a phenom. His parents grinded non-stop so DJ and his younger brother Mateo could stay focused as student athletes. DJ's been a quarterback since day one, but since he was always one of the biggest on the team, a lot of people thought he actually played D-line. It's like I said, you just don't see QBs built like DJ, almost ever. The future Clemson Tiger was actually raised a huge USC fan. His grandparents were season ticket holders and brought DJ to a ton of games at the Coliseum. Growing up, his favorite player was Reggie Bush. Reggie was the reason he chose to rock number five and picked up the nickname Big Cinco. Even though he was a natural, it wasn't always smooth sailing. Before DJ got to high school, he wasn't sure if he wanted to keep playing football but his dad didn't get to reach his own football dreams, so he helped convince DJ not to give it up. The rest is history. Growing up, his dad, Big Dave, doubled as DJ's hype man. His Facebook and Twitter was flooded with highlights of DJ and Mateo. DJ would go on to receive his first scholarship offer from Indiana when he was in just sixth grade, all because his dad never stopped posting his highlights to Facebook. Before he got to high school, DJ added college offers from USC and UCLA. Do y'all realize how ridiculous it is for an eighth grader to have multiple scholarships? With three plus offers already in the bag, up next, it was time to ball out at St. John Bosco, one of the top high school programs in the country. DJ actually didn't play as much football as most phenoms. So when he got to St. John Bosco, he and the fam knew he might need some time to develop, but this was the place to take him to the top. Not only does St. John Bosco play in one of the best leagues in the nation, the Trinity League, but they tended to play big out-of-state powerhouses as well. So if you balled out at Bosco, you were beating the very best in the country. Because of that, Bosco was always stacked. Playing time was earned, and then some. DJ didn't get a varsity start until his sophomore season. Heading into year two, Big Cinco was competing with the brave senior QB, Real Mitchell. But Mitchell was up and down to start the year, so Uyunglele got his chance to step up in week three. In his first varsity game, DJ led Bosco to a huge comeback win. DJ showed that despite being just a sophomore, he could lead this powerhouse program. Both QBs were in the rotation after week three, but ultimately Bosco's coach decided to roll with DJ, sealing the starting job for the rest of the season. DJ won this huge battle, but he still had a tough road ahead of him. In his very first varsity start, Uwe Ungalale faced off with Bosco's rival Modern Day. Led by five-star USC commits JT Daniels and Amon Ra St. Brown. Bosco came up short, but Big Cinco held his own with 257 yards and two TDs. Later in that season, Bosco and Modern Day went at it again for the division championship. Although Bosco lost again, it only amplified the rivalry more and motivated DJ to take down Modern Day. Uwe Ungalale was now halfway through high school and starting to get even more buzz from top colleges. 
Soon he would have 30 plus offers. And by the end of high school, his coach said that number was probably around 70 or more. Everyone was after him. Since DJ grew up a die-hard Trojan fan, USC was mad high on his list. But his recruiting world got complicated when top QB Bryce Young, who had just transferred to modern day, committed to USC. Now DJ had a big decision to make. Did he want to go to his hometown school to compete with Bryce or open up his recruitment even more? Most top quarterbacks don't follow another five-star in their class or any QB at all. The toughest decision of his life just got a whole lot harder. By his junior year, DJ was the number one ranked QB in the nation. In year three, he backed up that ranking and more, throwing for nearly 3,400 yards and 48 passing TDs. Not to mention he rushed for over 300 yards and another six tutties. In his first full year as QB1, DJ led Bosco to 13 straight wins and a championship rematch with modern day. Uwe Ungalale actually took down the Monarchs in the regular season 41 to 18. But in the ship, Bryce Young and Modern Day left the Braves heartbroken again. Now DJ had just one year left to win it all in high school. It wouldn't define him win or loss, but he wanted it so badly. With his junior year campaign behind him, the family switched their attention back to recruiting. Clemson hadn't offered DJ until right before his junior year. Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson staff assumed most SoCal QBs would stick to the West Coast. But after Bosco's head coach put in a word to Clemson, the Tigers went all in on DJ. He had almost every top school in the country after him. So when the Tigers stepped up their interest, he definitely noticed. Clemson was blown away after seeing him sling it in person. They were all in. But DJ wasn't quite ready for a commitment. Soon he locked in his top seven. Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, Clemson, LSU, Oklahoma, and his dad's alma mater, Mount Sac. Now, it was time for college visits. The summer after his junior year, DJ visited Alabama, Georgia, and Clemson. In the past year, DJ loved visiting the Crimson Tide, and at one point almost committed. But not long after that, Clemson had finally offered him. He had a big decision to make. After a bit more time, he decided on a new top three. Oregon, Clemson, and Mount Sac. On May 5th, 2019, DJ made his long-awaited college decision. He would be heading to Clemson University. Tiger up, baby. The five-star was convinced after Clemson developed Deshaun Watson, Kelly Bryant, and now Trevor Lawrence. He and Dabo also bonded over their faith. DJ found his dream school, and Coach Sweeney found his future QB. With that huge decision behind him, DJ could focus on his last year of high school ball. He had one focus, take out his rivals and go out on top. The five stars final year at Bosco couldn't have gone better. Not a single team could get a dub against DJ and the Braves. They even got their revenge on modern day, twice. Down 28 to five in the championship game, DJ led the comeback of his life. Bosco scored 34 unanswered points to shock modern day. Next up was the state title game against NorCal powerhouse De La Salle. DJ completed 23 of 28 passes for 398 yards and four touchdowns. He also ran for 64 yards and another score. He just built different. 10,496 career passing yards, 127 passing TDs, and only 11 interceptions. Now it was time for his final games of his high school career. First, DJ went down to Texas for the All-American Bowl. After showing out there, he was headed to Hawaii for the Polynesian Bowl. DJ had a great time in Hawaii and was named the Polynesian High School Player of the Year. Now, it was time to head to Death Valley. From day one, DJ had the opportunity to learn from Heisman candidate Trevor Lawrence. He blew away the coaching staff in camp and became Trevor's backup. But that didn't mean he wouldn't get his shot on Saturday. On September 12th, DJ would get his first chance. The Clemson phenom remained calm and poised in his college debut, completing two of three passes for 16 yards against Wake Forest. Not too long after that, DJ found out Trevor Lawrence was gonna miss some time. It was his turn to start. Against Boston College, DJ remained calm, going off for 367 yards, three scores, and a comeback win. 
DJ's second career start was even stronger. Although the Tigers lost in double overtime at Notre Dame, Big Cinco passed for 439 yards, the third most ever in a game by a Clemson QB, and the most passing yards ever by an opposing QB against the Irish. To start the year, DJ wasn't sure how much he'd see the field, but he bodied every opportunity he got in year one. DJ's already given fans a taste of what his future at Clemson holds, but things are just heating up. If and when Trevor Lawrence heads to the NFL, this will be DJ's time. His time to lead Clemson. His time to add to their trophies. With DJ leading the way, you won't want to miss Clemson football for the next two, three years. It's been your favorite storyteller, O.T. Cambo. I got to get out of here and watch some more overtime. Later. What up, what up, what up, what up, OT fam? I know y'all was rocking with the OG Overtime hoodies, so we had to drop more new flavors on y'all. Head to the Overtime shop to peep out the new colorways, link in description. Also, don't forget to subscribe over here and check out more videos this way. See if you can rock pink better than your boy. Doubt it.